Hi, good evening. It's March 3rd. I wanted to do a, another update with this newsletter. Um, really quick, I want to do a review of the year, some of my goals that I set, and you can see how well they've uh, achieved based on some tools that I've been recommending in my past newsletters. Uh, but first of all, uh, it's been so busy this week. I had a, a really bad uh, sinus infection Monday and Tuesday, and I got over that, and Thursday and Friday, I think I've had some of the busiest days on record, both here in the store and on the phone. Uh, the Omaha store is really doing well. We had, uh, I think I've, I sold, just here in the store, six bypass kits. And a, a dealer that I'm familiar with, he's not in my group, but out in California, has these custom Duramax mounts made. I bought a few of those, and sure enough, they helped me sell the kits. It's just a, I should have grabbed one. It's a little mount that... Uh, bolts right onto the frame where there's some indentations already uh, and it uh, makes the bypass kit sales really easy for the Duramax. Uh, we'll feature that in another video. Tomorrow I'm going to do a video on trade show booths so stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to get this newsletter together and out tonight uh, but real fast I wanted to the purpose of this newsletter I just wanted to throw a bunch of useful uh, Word docs and some things that you can print out for your customers on this one. Um, I signed up, they called me, they found my website, a, a retail account in just south, about 70 miles south of St. Louis, Missouri. And I'm trying to get my local dealer there uh, to work with them on this one. But they have a quick lube and an auto parts store combined. And they asked, they request a list of uh, products to. Um, to sell in their store and what would be the best items to have for their lube shop and that got me thinking I haven't done a formal letter to these type of accounts in a while because usually I chat with them on the phone so what I did was I came up with a new letter a, a, a addition to letter a secondary letter and then a suggested Amsoil uh, top 10 list so to speak so that's what I wanted to post on this newsletter to help new dealers and, and some older dealers get an idea of kind of where my conversations go with a new customer. Just helpful stuff. A couple other sales tools I'm going to have links on here. And this video and other uh, dealer sensitive videos, these are the type of videos that I don't put on YouTube. Uh, I just share with my dealers. You can find them here if you look on the screen. It's going to be on the oilordering.com. I'll put this link up on the page too, but it's Dealer Training Archive Hub, just hyphens in the middle, and these will be tools just for our dealers alone. They're always going to stay here. They'll just be archived. So take a look at that when you have a moment. Uh, but uh, speaking with this account, I remember this T3. Um, they call it the Amsoil Buy Sell Process. And Rob actually did this for the Amsoil University Online. I didn't even see it until the other day. And I've watched it twice now, and there's so many excellent points. I actually made a mistake with a customer on the phone that I realized after watching this as far as uh, I shouldn't have, shouldn't have hung up so soon to come up with my list to make the suggestions until I had a chance to discuss with them about their customer base. So that ties that up. Also, a lot of prior things in Amsoil U answers this question here. What is the one most important uh, values a salesperson can bring to the table? What is one of the most important values a salesperson can bring to the table? Um, that question uh, is easily answered once you know all the market uh, knowledge, not just from your customer, but from the uh, Amsoil University point of view. They, they toss a lot of information out of there. I think the one thing that comes to mind first to me is the fact that to a lube shop, for example, that uh, you're doing a cold call to and they're, they may not be too familiar with Amsoil or they may think it's too high price, they may not be familiar with OE, is the fact that uh, uh, just by standard, our, uh, our product brings in customers that they wouldn't have and customers that are willing to spend more money on aftermarket uh, services. So be sure to, when you have time, take a look at this uh, T3 level course. 
but he makes some some great points. Let's see if I can put a segment on here how well it works. Paying the bills. How do I pay the bills? Yeah, it causes a delay on this system here, but uh, <laughs> there's some really good points, so be sure to watch that. I also wanted to touch on the year in review, just to start out, since I've been doing those product videos, and then a few uh, dealer type videos for new customers, you know, you want to be an Amazon dealer. What I do is the YouTube video, and then I do the subtitles, and I collect the subtitles, and I put them below, and then I put them on my website. The combination of that is is rich in content. It doesn't matter if I'm, you know, exclusively knowledgeable about this stuff. It's the fact that I'm willing to share this information. A new customer sees that, and we know that through Amsoil, there's a hundred new dealers that sign up a day. And the question for you is, why not channel them through your business? And that's what my experiment was to see if YouTube. I knew it would do it anyway because there's hardly any dealers doing it, and. You know, my videos are not that exciting, but neither are any of the other ones. So we're going to be stepping that up here. Uh, I got my, finally, a decent Bluetooth mic, you know, with headphones and everything, so I won't be holding the microphone. And I got one of these cool Garmin uh, Ultra Action Cams, the ones you put on a motorcycle helmet or you're doing oil changing, so you can do demonstrations and things like that. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, we're going to make them more action-oriented. But because of these videos, the product-related videos, I've had uh, not only a record number of preferred customers sign up, because on those videos, even though you're, even with the subtitles, you've got the links that drive customers to your sites. So having the links on there, whether it's to buy it wholesale or to check out a product or to sign up as a dealer. And then you get the you have the YouTube page explaining you as yourself. Who wants to go to a website and sign up as a dealer? They don't even know who they're signing up under. At least there's a face and a name. It's going to bring the not only the likelihood that they're going to sign up through you, but you're going to get a dealer that's more enthusiastic about doing business. Uh, I think what's happening is the dealers that have a real clever site, but there's no name or there's no address, I'm here in, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle of Indiana, blah, blah, blah. They're just getting these passive uh, people that just see it as a $30 business and will never do anything. So the quality of the dealer is increased if you target the person looking to start their own business. So here's what's happened over the last year. I set a goal to actually increase my... Uh, Let's see, 2014, I had a, a peak year. In 2015, it dropped a little bit. So my, uh, my goal was to get the sales back to where they were in 2014. And I think my weakest point was working these stores. I dropped off on the dealer side. So I started focusing back on that. And rather than get it up about 15%, I actually uh, increased my sales or the overall uh, downline sales 25%. So with these efforts of the newsletter, the videos, uh, the multiple uh, websites, the discussion about the websites, discussion about Amsoil U, uh, my overall sales increased $100,000. Um, I didn't mark what my preferred customer sales were, but at this time I have eight, 892 preferred customers, and the total sales last year just from the preferred customers was a hundred and eighty thousand dollars that's just preferred customers alone uh, my orders my product purchases of my own that includes both of these stores the Omaha store the Sioux Falls store and all these phone calls that come in through the website so it doesn't include online retail orders but it's the orders that uh, that call me they want to buy a bypass kit that was two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in cost purchases again that's loading this store that store every month and uh, Amsoil is popular the name is there you I've made it a household name in this town I mean me saying that I've done that that can be debated but uh, it's happening Amsoil stats when they did these market studies on these quick lubes I, I believe it was something like 10% of, of all the customers questioned 
uh, AMSO was expected to be seen in the quick lube shop. That was these were questions that weren't directed to get them to say the AMSO product. These were surveys that were taken. So we're there, and for a synthetic, that's uh, that's a good number there. Um, so be sure to review this T uh, T four by cell process. Um, oh. Also, in the premium zone, I think it is, the retention report, or maybe all dealers can see this. Check out the retention report. Uh, three or four years ago, my dealer retention was, uh, over at one year, my retention rate was 24%. So of all the dealers I'd sign up, the first year, they uh, only 25% would uh, re-up. And the fourth year, my retention rate was um, I think that was 50 percent so once I got to four four years half of those dealers were going away I actually reversed those trends completely uh, it's now 56 percent after the first year which seems about natural because uh, that's every other dealer that signs up is just uh, looking into this they're not ready or anything like that and then the other half are sticking with it. So uh, those look at that retention rate, write it down, and then set a goal. It allows you to set goals. Same with the dealer dashboard where I got those other numbers, the preferred customers. Set a goal and then make a list of the things that you can do to achieve a uh, 10% increase there. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the new diesel oils real fast. Let's go look at this. If you look here at the signature uh, series, Max Duty, we know that just debuted. Uh, the big feature here, I don't think it's talked about enough, we know it has the better uh, wear protection. It is a new product, even though the DEO and DME uh, acronyms stay put. Uh, this oil here features the uh, ability to go twice as long on light duty trucks without oil analysis the thing I really like though right on the box on the side of the box it, it gives that information right there but I think what the big oil is going to be the the big seller the strong seller is going to be this heavy duty line which replaced the OE the OE was a group 3 base I believe and now just as you see here on the bottle 100% synthetic and if they want to go twice as long, they have that option. But uh, look at your cost on that product. Of course, the two and a halfs and the gallons in the case is going to be less than this. I think a truck driver did the calculations uh, as an account. He was paying three dollars and seventy-five cents a quart or less in the fifty-five gallon drum. Uh, think about it. You can go twice the intervals of this if you're doing oil analysis already. It's a bargain. The customer that I see buying this that wasn't buying before is the one that walks in and buys for his Harley or the guy that has that Chrysler that calls for that special 040. So he comes in for that. But his work truck, he doesn't consider the product. Well, now uh, there's no objection on price. So this makes an easy sell. So think about that. Be sure to read the data sheets. Read the, the tests that were done on this. And let me see if there's something else I want to highlight here. And the most important thing uh, I see here is this Ford spec, which you've probably read about already on the new 2016 and up trucks. Ford has not had, they have not seen good results from other CK4 rated oils. They, the wear rates are uh, tremendous. They're um, uh, killing the motors, basically. Well, ours, Amsel started working on this product, uh, on this rating, uh, four or five years ago. So they were ready for it. Uh, we exceed that and uh, I think Ford actually has an official list Amsel should be getting on that list soon we'll be watching for that but regardless of that Amsel will, will uh, back this so if a customer did have a problem verbally or on paper at Ford Amsel still backs this up so we did pass their test we passed it and Ford's recommendation to only use CJ4 rated oils on 2017 and newer since this uh, rating has gone in effect uh, it's not we're out of the blue on this one so it's a great oil um, 
and and just again a price that cannot be there's no objections here so that wraps up the video I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you get any new dealers uh, try to do these videos yourself and send them off because it's it's really working I'm pleased with uh, how it's how it's worked for my business and it simplifies the newsletters too not everybody wants to read a whole newsletter if they could just click on a video uh, whether they watch a quarter of it or the whole thing um, it uh, it lets them know that there is somebody else there that's willing to help them with their business and that's actually the core point that Amsoil uh, the factor when a dealer wants to leave an upline or they quit the Amsoil business altogether is because they couldn't find the support so that's our uh, news for this afternoon watch for our trade show video coming in the next couple of days thank you